What is up, everybody? Welcome to the LJ Effect Podcast, affecting your mind and body to become your most authentic self. So today, I have a young content creator with me who is a martial artist and practices Brazilian jiu-jitsu and trains in it. So, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Zachary Heath. What's going What's on, up, my guys? Man? Good to see you, man. Is there like a crowd like effect going on? I need to hear that. <laughs> Need to hear the fans. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if I could add in some like sound effects for applause, I would. <laughs> I don't know. Gets me going. Maybe I could send this video to you and you could add it in for me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good to see you though, man. Yeah, it's, it's great to connect with you, Zach. I'm glad that you're able to do this. So awesome, man. Um, so Zach has a YouTube channel. It's just his name, Zachary Heath, as well as Instagram. It goes by Zach Heath. And uh, yeah, man, so as far as what we talked about, you're uh, 20 years young, you work as a lifeguard, live in Tennessee. Kind and, of work uh, as a lifeguard. Kind of, part-time. Kind of, kind of. But, but that's just to pay for your gym fee that you, you know, Not anymore. practice your jujitsu. Not anymore. I got some news <laughs> for you, but we'll keep on going. Okay. Okay. So anyways, he guards the life, everybody, as well as he guards his own life in practicing Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So, yeah, man, I figured uh, we could get started with that. Um, yeah, I, I was really blown away by your most viewed video, um, a day at the Daisy Fresh Laundromat, Pettigos yeah, Mission man. Fight, and that was your vlog episode, so, um, which I will be leaving that in the description down below, ladies and gentlemen, so go ahead and uh, click that link and we'll watch uh, use Zach and watch him in his wholesome fullness awesome i think it was at like a little over two thousand views i think it's sitting at like four or five now dude it's been a while since we talked man but uh, <laughs> it's grown since then well i mean and just for videos like that too man especially when you're just starting out with content creating uh, at least this is what i've learned like it'll compound interest over time like just starting mm -hmm. out with one video depending on what time frame you did it because even on my channel like i'm looking back past well like four years almost four years back at least three years back and i'm looking at videos that i did three years ago and some of them have four to three thousand views over that now right man so. they just grow exponentially over time you just gotta let it grow sit marinate you know how it goes you've oh, been yeah. for a while <laughs> yeah no and i mean it's it's coming along nicely it's coming along nicely so Zach, uh, why don't you go ahead and tell my viewers a little bit about yourself and how you got into uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Woo! Okay, man, this is a story. Okay, where do I start? Where do I start? We could start um, at the end of high school. End of high school, okay. Yeah. Uh, to make a very long story short, I um, was dating a girl. Um, wasn't good for me. I mean, you know, most relationships aren't at that age. I was like maybe 17 at the time. And uh, I remember an ex-boyfriend came back into the picture and me being the young stud I was at the time, I had to prove like my pride and my ego and all this stuff. Hmm. And I agreed to fight this dude. And in my what? head, I was like, yeah, man, <laughs> yeah. I was like 17. I had, I had been in like a few like quote unquote fights, you know, before then with hmm. my buddies, we would just put on gloves or like we would wrestle or anything, but never anything like to like maliciously hurt each other. Right. Hmm. and um yeah man i agreed to fight this dude and i was like honestly i was scared shitless sorry hmm. but do i need to no it's out there okay cool you're good this is this is an <laughs> unedited raw podcast we're shooting this straight through ladies and gentlemen so what you see is what you get <laughs> yeah man like look like i was i was scared shitless to be completely honest with you sure. anybody that says that they aren't scared when they go into a fight they're lying don't listen to them hmm. Everybody gets scared, even professional fighters. They know what's on the line. You can get seriously hurt. Oh, but yeah. I was scared, man. So um, I grabbed my buddy and I was like, bro, you have to come with me to like a gym so I can learn how to fight. And, you know, after all that was said and done, the fight never actually happened. Hmm. But I ended up going to the gym with him after the fight to like learn how to, you know, throw some hands and do some jujitsu and stuff to a place called I think it was called elite martial arts it's a small little like school in brentwood um okay to be honest i wouldn't go there 
just being just being frank with you, I wouldn't go there if you're in the Tennessee area. Um, <laughs> not because they're a bad gym. It's just you know you're not. I think you can get a lot of value from just like a solid jujitsu gym on its own. Mm. But anyways, um, when I was there, I kind of learned like a few basics. Like you know, I learned how to punch, throw a jab, throw a roundhouse kick, and you know, I'd already been watching some UFC fights before, so I'd already had the idea. But get so this. Learning a little bit of uh, either mixed martial arts or uh, yeah, yeah, kickboxing at the time, and then throwing mm-hmm. in some jujitsu there too. Okay. Yeah, like there would be days where we would strictly grapple. I remember I learned a very sloppy triangle choke there. It was very bad. Okay. But, um, we did the same thing in my MMA gym too when I trained at mm-hmm. the time. So it was so, uh, jujitsu nights and then uh, kickboxing nights. Yeah, but I mean, man, I fell in love with it. In fact, uh, yeah. first time I first time I sparred there, I threw on the gloves. I'm pretty sure I broke this guy's nose. Started bleeding like he was. Like, it was bad. It was bad, right? I I got hit, and I, I you know how like when you first start, you get hit, and like all the aggression in your head comes like built up, and you just get pissed. So I just threw a haymaker at him, and I think I broke his nose. But moral of the story: don't get into fights. Don't do it. Where we went after that, though. I ended up going to college over at MTSU. I graduate from Independence High School over in uh, Thompson Station, Tennessee, and I start to go to MTSU. And I had, you know, told my buddies that I met there that like, hey, hey guys, like, look, I'm going to start uh, doing jujitsu, you know, like, when I say I'm going to do something, man, I'm going to do it. Like, I, right. I, my word is huge for me. Right. If I don't have my word, what do I have, you know? It's true, man. So I, I got Very enrolled. True. I got enrolled in August of 2018. Okay. Or 2017. Either or. I don't really remember. It's okay. But uh, so yeah, I just started doing jujitsu and I loved it. I uh, ended up getting involved with this little uh, MMA club over at MTSU. Didn't fall through. Ended up just doing jujitsu and from there, man, the rest is history, you know? Mm. I think I competed in my first tournament around three months after I started. Didn't do so hot, but I took home a third place medal, which is, you know, it's all right. It's all right. Well, dude, I mean, yeah. I mean, taking home any kind of hardware is nice after a tournament or a competition. And I know the feeling right. too, because you know, I mean, I did a men's physique competition and just for the fact that I placed and took home some hardware, it felt pretty good, you know? <laughs> yeah, man. And I'm sure you know what the like kind of communities like jujitsu and fighting and all that stuff. Like mm-hmm. you build some close relationships there. Yeah, no, you, you start to, it depends on how long you're going to stay at a gym and you probably could elaborate a little bit more on that since you've been in it longer than I have. I've had just some kind of minor in between training with a specific gym where I can relate more though, is I really dedicated myself to like stand up and I did boxing for about a year and a half. And I got uh-huh. pretty, pretty good at my like uh, throwing hands and such and like doing bag work and stuff like that. And I mean, earlier on, like what you're saying, man, like, I mean, going into a fight, if you're not, you know, feeling scared then, or you're saying that you're not scared, then yeah, you, you, you're, you're like totally lying about it. Because I mean, I remember even just getting into sparring sessions, like I did not want to get hit at first, but I, I forced mm-hmm. myself into that because I knew that I needed to get hit and like right, right. harden up my body. Like my coaches these guys were experts. Like they've spent their lives in it. Some of them were professional fighters that I worked with. And they literally said, like, if you don't train yourself in these sparring sessions, your body won't get hard hardened to it and won't get used to the impact basically Mm -hmm. for that kind of training and that explosiveness. It's a completely different kind of training style and conditioning versus uh, standard lifting and bodybuilding too. There's nothing that matches it, you know? It really isn't. <laughs> I have a deep amount of respect for anybody who does body builds and all that stuff, but it's just not the same. You know? No, it, it's not. It's it's two completely different uh, aspects of activity, is what I would say. Um, two different aspects of working out, conditioning. You're doing a lot more cardiovascular work than you are uh, muscle building and tearing down of muscle fibers and trying to rebuild the body. You know, right? Although there is yeah. a little bit of there's a little bit involved in that, but more of it's dealing with like training and skill and technique and uh, drilling it into your head, like knowing what to do and how to basically like figure the other guy out as you're grappling with human chess, you know? Yeah. Human human chess. chess. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. And maybe you could elaborate a little bit more on that too, Zach. Human chess, like the best way to describe it. I remember um, I heard, uh, I think it was Hodger Gracie. Like he talked about it in like some video that I watched way back when I was first getting in. But if mm -hmm. I had to like kind of describe what he said, and then I'll give my own like view on it. He said, jujitsu is like this, you move, I move, you move, I move until one of us gets tired. Mm -hmm. The way I see it is kind of like, you try to, you try to get the best of me. I try to get the best of you now. And we're going to keep on going like through that, like, you know, little circle until one of us either fatigues, uh, mentally break, like one thing that once you do it long enough, and like you get good enough is when you're like, let's say you're passing somebody's guard. If you don't know what passing uh, somebody's guard is for anybody watching, it's basically when somebody's on their back and their legs uh, are in front of you and you have to get past their legs. Right. Because uh, what most people don't understand is our legs are like, they're 50% of our body. So they, most of our strength and power comes from our lower half of the body and they're very dangerous, right? Yeah. So if you get past the legs, you have a very good chance of submitting somebody or, you know, uh, ending their life if you so decided to, like if it was a life or death situation. Right? Yeah. So don't get, you know, don't get uh, preoccupied with the legs. So you would pass the guard, get past their legs. From there, it's, uh, you know, submit. Mm. And uh, so that's kind of why it's like human chess. The best way to like kind of describe it is like if we're playing chess, you have your pawns. I have to get past your pawns in order to get to your king. But to get to your king, you've also got your knights, your rooks, your bishops, you know, your queen. You've got things protecting your, your, your king. Yeah. In jiu-jitsu, the checkmate would be the tap, like I submit you. Mm -hmm. In chess, it's I got to get the check, right? I got to put your king in a position where he is forced to, you know, give up. Checkmate. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it definitely does. Um, between getting tired, I thought it was always between like that last that last move that the other person makes, like, and getting that submission, like like what you just said. Like, mm -hmm. I figured maybe it was just the other guy outsmarting the other guy, um, because I know some guys can power through the fatigue and they can still aim with their technique and just kind of get somewhere <laughs> along the lines, even though they're just tired as shit, you know. Yeah, there's a little bit of that, but most of the time when you're at like a very high level, like form of competition, um, mm -hmm. like, let me give you an example. Um, yeah. Right now, I'm training a lot with a guy named Andrew Wiltsey. Okay. He's a five-time world champion, real deal black belt, right? Like, oh, wow. he, he could kill you at will if you wanted to. Wow. <laughs> the fact is, at that level, once you reach a certain point, like, let's say you have a guy's back, it, there's very, there's a very little chance that you're going to get out of that that uh that scenario so it's like if if he takes your back there's a very good chance you're going to get submitted right you know, like 90 percent. so that's why like getting past the legs is so important it the fatigue it plays a factor but once you break somebody like once like because when two people are going at it you know both of them are going to be fatigued all the time so it's really just a, a battle of wills. If you break them, you win. Yeah, no, definitely. Especially if you give up your back, man, because then they're just going to go in for the choke. And once you get choked, you just, there's no way out of it. Yeah. You, you basically it's... either got to pass out or there's you got to There's some tap. Hail Marys. Yeah, there's some <laughs> Hail Marys, but most of the time you're going straight to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Good night. <laughs> yeah, good night. Hey, I almost got this guy. <laughs> oh, Yeah. Have you ever passed out, like, being choked out before? Pretty close. Not going to lie. I, I think I tapped every time. I've really? Had my neck, I've had my neck cranked on a couple different times, too. So, um, had a few arm, arm bars straightened out, and I had to just couldn't get out of it, you know? Right, right. <laughs> um, and like I said, like, I only, I only got into jujitsu for maybe about three or four months on the nights that we did okay. it with the gym that I was training with at the time, and then... Um, just uh, kind of ended up falling off the wagon, had other priorities at the time, mainly because of work and uh, the shifts I was working at the time, my occupation. Um, I was just trying to keep up with, I think, the gym too um, at, at that time in my life. But 
Um, it was a good experience though. And I still knew that gym. And so um, later on, like actually a couple of years later, I was able to kind of get back in there and do a little bit more training. Um, mm -hmm. Not in jujitsu though. I just went back to kickboxing uh, just for the, it's like certain morning classes. It's always good to get into some kind of training like that though too. Um, yeah, man. It just helps. It's good. It's good. Man, like when somebody like, when you don't tap, it's a weird feeling. Mm. It's like you wake up like, you wake up dizzy, you know, mm. like have you ever like gone around and like a, um, or like woken up from a dream and you're just like, whoa, like, where am I? It's yeah. kind of like that. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very, uh, it's a very strange feeling. Cause I've seen your videos. I think even like the last one that you put out where you were getting choked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> raw man. That's yeah, raw. Man. And my I've, buddy I've was seen... choking me out. And I mean, dude, it just, it doesn't get any easier to watch. I mean, I've watched, you know, from UFC fights to regular cage matches here locally at some of the casinos mm -hmm. in my area. So that's where they make it a highlight, you know? And I mean, it's, it's like standard, you know, stuff for prof professional fights. Like most of the UFC fights, they try to do it in Vegas, you know, at those casino areas, you know, um, aside from some other areas like in California, but yeah, dude, it just like, you see someone getting choked and if they don't tap, they're going to sleep, man. Like that's just, that's, that's the one, that's the one outcome or the other, you know? <laughs> and here's the thing, man, people need to see that. Mm. They need to see that they're like, no matter how like invincible you think you are, you're not, right. you know, no matter how trained you are, you're not invincible. So like when you see somebody get choked out like that, like kind of like I was in the moment where my face is like getting red and it's like, I know like I'm, I'm done. Like once you see that tap and you see like, oh, <gasps> <gasps> that's raw and people need to see that because it can happen to them in the blink of an eye. You yeah. know, they, they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. They piss off the wrong person. And it turns out that person's like a professional fighter. They need to see that, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, it takes me back to this. I think it was one of Joe's recent podcasts, but the guest that he had on asked him like, so dude, I mean, like, what would you do in a situation where it's, it's about to get heated? Like, do you, do you fight or do you flight? You know, like, do you, do you fight or do you run? And I was kind of surprised by his answer because, you know, right. Joe, he's, he's a trained fighter. He, he, he did uh, kickboxing competitions uh, all through high school into his uh, early twenties, I think too. So he was trained in mixed martial arts before he became a spectator and all that. He's an expert, you know? Yeah. An expert. And uh, he said, dude, like, regardless, I would run, run if you can. Mm -hmm make fighting the last option because you don't know what that person is going to do, especially if you don't know who that person is. Especially now where it's become popular. It could be completely unexpected and they may know or have an upper, an upper hand, even if you've been training for years, even if you're a pro too, um, right. you know, you're just taking that chance, right. you know, just how life right. is. But his recommendation was uh, run. And I was a little surprised by his answer, but at the same time, after he had explained it a little bit more like that, like it, it made sense. Like you're better off to uh, run or stop the fight before it even happens or to, you know, get into a fight. And if it does go that, and if it does go south, at least defend yourself and then see what happens next. <laughs> yeah, man. Anticipate. You never know. Like maybe that guy you piss off as a NCAA, like, you know, state champion wrestler or an all American wrestler. And he just picks mm. you up and drops you on your head. You know, mm. you're not waking up from that from that uh hit from to the concrete yeah pile driver <laughs> and, and it's that it's that simple too you know mm -hmm. it takes no. one lucky punch or one you know head off the canvas or head off the the ground and you're done definitely dude definitely you just gotta hit just you gotta get hit just right um so tell me about the time that you met clay mayfield oh man <laughs> For anybody who doesn't know, Clay Mayfield is my jiu-jitsu coach. Uh, I'm a part of uh, Pedigo Submission Fighting. It's uh, one of the top two teams in North America. You know, we're on the come up. You know, we're getting we're getting up there. Um, Are you? Like yeah. as of recent or in the last couple of years since you joined? Last couple of years, like okay, we've been blowing up, man. It's we're blowing up. Nice. Uh, Wiltsy's part of uh, Pedigo Submission Fighting, five-time world champion. But how I met Clay Mayfield. Yeah. I was part of Gracie Baja at the time. And I remember I was only like three months into jujitsu. Right. So I was, I, 
I didn't know much, but I knew a little bit. And so in my like, you know, like three month old jujitsu brain, my barber's talking to me and he's like, Hey man, like I know this brown belt that just moved into town. He just started his own academy and everything. And I'm thinking like, Oh, some brown belt. I'm only three months in. I didn't know that brown belts could be like better than black belts at the time. Mm. I'm like, oh, this brown, he's just a brown belt, like nothing major. <laughs> Ironically enough, Clay Mayfield walks in through the door about five minutes later to get a haircut. And my barber goes, Oh man, that's the guy, that's the guy. And I'm, <laughs> and like this dude, just to give you like a, a, a picture image, he's yeah. got his hair is like nearly buzzed. Like, you know, he's got a little like, uh, like hair on it, but he's coming in to buzz it off. He's got like cargo shorts. He's got a shirt on that says Pedigo submission fighting. You know, he just right. looks you know he's kind of built he just looks hard right and i'm like oh like i don't know who this is but i'm like i I spoke too soon (laughs) yeah right i spoke too soon and you know we we end up talking a little bit and at the end of our conversation he goes you know man you should come to my gym i just opened it up like you know come have a roll with us and i'm like okay Mm. like i don't have anything going on tonight like i'll come by so i end up going to the gym right and it goes a little something like this I get there, there's uh, maybe eight, ten people on the mats, um, brand new gym, everybody's a white belt. I'm thinking, I'm a white, I'm like a two-stripe or one-stripe white belt at this time, and I'm thinking, like, oh, I got a stripe, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be better than these guys. Mm. And I did, I did fairly well, and then I get to roll with Clay. Mm. And anybody who doesn't know, Clay is a, uh, he's the number seven black, brown belt in the world. Right. I mean, dude knows his shit. Mm. And so what he does is he takes his hand, puts it in his belt, and then he goes, okay, let's go. And I'm looking at him like, you're going to fight me with one hand? And no he, way. And so I'm like, okay. And so I'm thinking like, okay, he's only got one hand. Like, what could he possibly do? Yeah. He beat me so bad that I was scared to come in the next time. With one arm and two legs. Wow. He beat me so bad, I was scared to come back in. Dude. Like, it, it was bad, dude. I had never been beaten that bad before. And so, a couple months later, um, I'm at Lifetime Lifeguarding. Mm. and uh, Lifetime Lifetime Athletics, like you told me, right? Yes, Lifetime Athletic. Sweet. So uh, I'm at Lifetime, I'm lifeguarding. It's my first summer there. And this purple belt uh, comes up to me that I met at the gym. And oh, cool. he, was like, he was like, hey man, like, like we haven't seen you in like a month. Like you should come back in and train with us. I'm taking the time like, bro, I'm so scared to go back. I don't want to get beat up again. Oh man. You know? No way. So it, but, it had been, wait, so you said it had been a couple months since you'd gone back to the gym? Uh, yeah, so I, I got there in January, I remember, because I have a picture with Clay with one stripe on my belt. Yeah. And then it was around uh, May. Wow. That back. So it was about four or five months. Dude, he got in your head good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, this whole time I was training at Gracie Baja Franklin. So I was still at Gracie Baja, like, uh, I was on that team. Right. So I, I, I give in, you know, I give in to him. He convinced me and... I go back in. This time I do a little bit better, but he still beats the shit out of me. And so at this point, I'm like, okay, this guy knows his stuff. Like I gotta learn from him, you know? Yeah. Uh, I end off. I end up going back to college. I'm there for a few months training at Gracie Baja Murfreesboro. But recently, I switched teams, and now I'm training full time at Triangle Academy, the gym that Clay owns, mm-hmm. in here in Franklin, Tennessee, and. Uh, Recently, I've become a coach, so I'm now teaching no way. kids' classes, offering like private lessons and stuff. So, like I said, I I, I got news wow. for you. Like we yeah. did, we didn't talk about this last time. So. No, we didn't. So that's great, man. So yeah, now I'm a coach there. Um, things are going good, and now we can get into uh, the tournaments. Mm. Okay. So I gotcha. I've been through a couple tournaments. Um, if you want go check it out on the, there's a video I have out. I don't remember what it's called. I think it's like jujitsu journey or something like that. Yeah. No, it should be on your channel. I've seen it. Uh, 
Shameless people. plug. Shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so I, I have a, I have an experience with uh, tournaments, and I've never mm. not gone to a tournament and not medaled. Mm. So we went to this tournament about a month ago, uh, American Grappling Federations in St. Louis. Four divisions, right? So I had four divisions I was going to compete in. No gi, no gi absolute, which is like um, all the weight classes combined. Mm -hmm. E and in gi absolute. So once again, all the weight classes combined. Yeah. I think I had one of the worst performances of my life at this tournament. Oh, wow. First 30 seconds of my no gi match, I got submitted. Mm. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. It was bad. Dude, doesn't it just blow your mind how fast it can happen to get right? submitted? Like that. Just like that. Just, just like we were talking about earlier, it just takes the blink of an eye. Bam, there it is. Done. Mm -hmm. So, 30 seconds. Probably the worst match I've ever had in my life. Tried to shake it off. Next division, I had to go against this dude that was like six foot seven. Big dude. dude. And keep in, keep in mind, this is like a open weight division. Yeah, anything but, goes. But he, but he but he he doesn't weigh much, right? We're in the same weight bracket. Weird. Interesting. That is weird. Six and foot seven. If you guys don't know, I'm like five foot seven. So like, there's like yeah. a foot difference going on here. You're taller than me, man. So, yeah. <laughs> and that's also so like, something for me. Think about think about that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you think so six compare my height to six foot seven. It's like David and Goliath. But pretty much, weight, that's what it was. God, the weight throws me off, though, man, because usually when they're that tall, they're at least 200 pounds. It was like, right, keep going. It was real okay. like, I got to explain. <laughs> real weird. Um, but I had to go against him, and this match went a little bit better. He ended up submitting me with a triangle, so I'm in my head thinking, like, man, I just had the worst, like, two matches of my life, you know? Um, but I come back and I face him in the gi, and I destroy him. And it was awesome, right? But I still ended up losing the next match. And then I had another match in the absolute division. So that was in the normal key division. Went to the absolute. Ended up beating him again. Move on. And I faced the winner of uh, the other side of the bracket, which ironically enough was a guy on my own team, Pedigo Submission Fighting. And he ended up winning that tournament. Mm or that bracket rather that bracket okay we we had a good match we went the whole five or whole like nearly whole five minutes um and i don't remember if i got submitted or if the time ran out mm. it's but kind of anyway. hard to tell especially with the tournament you're going through so many matches at one time kind of lose right, track right. of which person you had so much time with when you're just going through them like that okay. but yeah man so we went through that um, he ended up winning the tournament. Good on that guy. Nice. And I just didn't do well. You know, I didn't even medal. That was a first for me. I think it really humbled me. Mm. And sure. But it was a good learning experience, though, too, at the same time. It very time. much was. Right? It very like, much was. I mean, what were you able to take from that, aside from, like, after being humbled? Like, what were you able to take from that tournament? So one of the big things I took away from that is that during this whole tournament, I wasn't really uh, – I think I was too – one, I was too cocky. I put out a video before this tournament of me winning that in-house tournament with four submissions, right? So I was kind of on my high horse. Uh -huh. I was thinking, I was like, hot shit, right? <laughs> I, I thought okay. I was good. And then you realize life can humble you just like that. Yeah. That was two weeks later. Two more weeks later, we had this new tournament in Fuji Bowling Green. So we, we drive up there, this is very recent. I got a video coming out on that soon. So you guys are going to be able to see those matches. But I ended up taking gold at that tournament. And now my ego is kind of like, you know, balanced out. So, you know, it was, a, it was a good experience. What I took away from the last tournament before that, one, I was entirely too cocky. Two, uh, basics win tournaments, basics win fights. I was doing a lot of like fancy, like lapel stuff with the gi. It just wasn't working out. Okay. But, uh, yeah, you got to let life humble you sometimes, you know? Absolutely, man. So just take it's, away from it. It's either, it's either you got to learn to be humble or you will be humbled. Exactly. I think even Joe talks about that too. 
Yeah, man. Here, I'm quoting Joe Rogan. <laughs> uh, but it's not just him, though. A few other people that I've followed or seen in talks or lectures. Hey, hey man, can you, can you put the guns away? They're like intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> via, via YouTube, like, there's been people that have talked about that, you know. I've had uh, actually a few different experiences in my life, too, where I've just been humble, too. You know, and, and I've noticed that like there was a few times in my life where I would get cocky and then all of a sudden it'd be dropped down and be like, oh, shit, this just happened, you know, and whether it was life circumstance or whether it was actually my fault or, you know, just life happening, you know, it just, I realized, man, this sucks, but this is life, you know? <laughs> yeah, man. You have those humbling moments, you know? It's that's the truth, man. It, it'll if if you don't accept it or if you don't try to seek it out. Definitely. So you started your YouTube channel around nine, ten months ago. What inspired you to start your YouTube channel and why? So I started it out. I think it was eleven months ago. I think it's almost at a year. Oh wait, yeah, <laughs> I forgot it's been a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I think it's coming up on a year. Wow. Yeah. So guys, don't quote me That's on that. That's crazy. <laughs> but That's crazy to think about. Yeah. But so basically, Zach, yeah, just tell us uh tell us what got you into YouTube. Why you started creating course. content. Of course. Um and I think if I'm correct, this might be the last thing we talk about before we head over to the exclusive Patreon, correct? <laughs> is that is that the deal? Rumor Maybe. on the Rumor on the street. But yeah. uh okay. <laughs> So I know you're well aware of who Elijah Long is. I was going to get into that a little bit too, yeah. Okay, so Elijah Long, another content creator on YouTube. He's been a big, I would say, mentor and inspiration to both me and Luke. I Absolutely. got his business group that he created. Um, and he was like, man, like, we got to come up, you know? Like, here's what we're going to do. Like, we're going to find a way to make a business. I had had a couple like uh, prior businesses before I created YouTube. Like I did, um, I tried out drop shipping a few times, you know, it didn't really work out. I tried a couple of different e-commerce stores. I made some money, but I, you know, it, it felt sleazy what I was doing. I was really? like, yeah, I was on eBay, like um, drop shipping directly to the consumer without being like a middleman or anything. Yeah. And you know, I was going to try that out at, at one point, but yeah, I didn't believe in my product. I didn't believe in any of that. So like, I, I eventually okay. stopped. I made a good amount of money, but it's like, if you're not passionate about what you do, then why are you doing it? That's kind of the mindset I have. But Elijah, he's not like, wrong. we gotta come up. So he's like, here's what we're gonna do. Everybody's gonna start a YouTube channel. And I'm like, I'm like, okay. I've always wanted to do one. I remember trying to start one up as like a little kid doing like Minecraft videos. No way. That's not up. That's not up anymore. It's all gone. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah. Dude, even even so, even if it's not a part of your your niche for your channel, even if you have those videos up on your channel, like from way back then, like that would still give your audience some history. But you know, <laughs> there there may be one on a like that I was on on a different channel, but it's like it's so way out there that it's like I dare somebody to find it. It's non-existent. Just, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, if uh, if you're just listening to this part of uh, the episode, see if you guys can find that video of Zach doing a Minecraft in a yeah, man. posted video on a different channel, different video. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. The username was ZACW54. Try to find that. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. You know, I'd always I'd always wanted to do YouTube. Like I had watched a couple. Mm. I was part of that like young era where it's like YouTube was really becoming like popular. And like people were like filming themselves like playing games and stuff and i'm thinking yeah. like bro i can do this right sure fast forward a couple of years i meet elijah and i actually start to make this reality i think i started around it was when i went back to school so probably it was my last semester of sophomore year if i'm correct at mtsu okay right and by the way, I go to MTSU. I'm a junior there now. Exercise yep. science. I think I forgot to mention that. Oh, yeah. Uh, go ahead. You just said the abbreviation of the school, but go ahead and give the full title. Yeah. Uh, Middle Tennessee State University. Middle Tennessee State University. Yep. So Awesome. I remember I didn't really have a camera. I, all I had was my phone, and I just sat down in my dorm, and I'm like, okay, 
This is going to be a really bad first episode, but humble beginnings. Here we go. I put it down and just started talking talking about random stuff. I think uh, my first episode was titled something along the lines of like, like we're limiting ourselves or something like that. Mm. And the message behind it was good. The delivery was awful. But I had to start somewhere, right? Dude, I had to start somewhere too. Uh, and then, my video, my video did not look the best with my first either. I even didn't. Even, mm-hmm. I don't do. I didn't even do the horizontal thing like uh, what I usually do with my phone because because I did the same exact thing. Um, mm-hmm. I ended up filming it like uh, like selfie style, but um, I had a, <laughs> I had a good message and I don't know. I, well, you've seen my channel, so I mean, if you yeah. go back to that very first video, you, you see what I'm talking about and. Actually, my first video, I mean, like, aside from it being a selfie thing, like, or selfie style, like, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad of a video, but I mean, it, it could have been way better, but yeah, no, humble beginnings, dude, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> but man, I, I started filming, and then I was like, man, I can really get into it, into this, so I started, I, I put an investment down, right, I got a camera, I got a GoPro Hero 7, I believe. Very um, nice. Yeah, so, you know, I got a camera, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to start filming vlogs. Like I know vlogs are big right now and I'm going to start filming my life and sharing it with people and see if people could take something away from it. So I start filming and I start filming and I start talking about different topics and I start to get a lot of feedback on it. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is great. Like, and a, a lot to me, a lot to me at the time was like 50 to a hundred views. That yeah. was a lot to me. I'm like, it, it's still like, a lot to me. 50 people have seen my stuff. Like if you think about what 50 people is, it's like, wow, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. And I just got more positive feedback. So I start, I keep making these vlogs and I'm just loving it. I'm loving the editing process and all this stuff and just filming, talking to a camera. People yeah. look at me so weird when I was in like, uh, like the dining halls where I'd be like filming my food. Like, okay guys, so here's what I got for <laughs> my lunch today. We got some, uh, some carrots, we got some broccoli, some London broil. And you know, people would just look at me like weird. Like I would mm-hmm phone at my table or with like one of my other buddies who knew what I was doing even he thought it was weird <laughs> oh man but yeah. I loved it you know yeah. I was like, I was like nobody's got this spear right now like I'm gonna capitalize on this yeah exactly and I mean I just wanted to say too that uh GoPros and this was knowledge for me at the time like uh and me also looking at other creators so Zach you had the right idea especially for vlogs because of those shots this is the cinematographer coming out of me right now the, those shots are so wide that they're perfect to fit your face and like half of your body in to where like mm-hmm. you kind of get enveloped in the shot. So when you're doing those kinds of videos and those kinds of talks where it's just more of a self video for a vlog, like you just have excellent picture quality right there. And then depending mm-hmm. on your content and the topic you're talking about, it can be the kind of video that people want to watch, you know? So exactly. you made a good, good, not just a good, but a great investment in getting, in, uh, getting into a GoPro. So for vlogging. Yeah, man. So, you know, back to where I, I was at, you know, I'm just filming. I'm, I'm loving this. And, you know, I start getting even more feedback. Like now guys are coming to me asking for advice. And I'm thinking mm-hmm. like, at the time I'm thinking like, bro, like people are asking me for advice. I'm like 20 years old, man. Like, what do I know? Like, I'm like, I don't know anything, but you're I'm like, at the time, man, you're ahead of I'm your like, age group. That's what's I'm up. like. <laughs> so now I got to start thinking like, okay, what would, what would my big brother tell me if I had one, right? So now I've, I've got this like big brother mentality that's like, okay, people are looking, me, looking to me for answers now. I have to lead. Like I got to set an example. So I start putting out like videos like, you know, like uh, be like a winner, don't be a loser and, you know, just helpful videos and people are loving it, right? And then I put out that Pedigo laundromat thing. I started posting more jujitsu and that blew up, yeah. you know? People love that. So I was like, that was the first video I found on your channel. Um, when I subscribed, like it showed up Mm -hmm. in my feed, I'm like, had to go. And then I saw the date and I'm like, Oh, this was a couple years ago. I'm like, damn, 2000 views. All right, let's see what's up. I took the time out of my day to watch it, man. I'm like, dude, that was crazy. (laughs) Right. So it's, uh, you know, it's been going well. I've, I've kind of taken a break from YouTube at the moment. I'm not stopping, but I do need, I do need to take a moment to like, you know, think about what exactly the future has in store for it because Mm. I got to this point where I knew I could keep putting out those videos, but I need to have like some greater purpose behind them. And I wasn't finding that. Right. Mm. So now I'm on a new chapter, right? Now it's about Mm. figuring out how I can help people and start to like lead like younger guys 
or older. I've had a couple older guys come to me for advice now, and it's like, I got to lead now. You know, I got to be that leader for people. So right. I'm thinking about a project, and maybe we'll talk about it in the Patreon. You can give mm -hmm. me some, some clues the on exclusive it. Exclusive episode? Okay. The exclusive episode. <laughs> Go to the go to Luke's Patreon. <laughs> I've <it> linked. <laughs> you want to watch that? But yeah, man. From there on, it's it's life's been treating me well, and I guess we'll talk about that a little bit more in the exclusive interview. Okay. Sure thing, man. No, we'll put it on there. Um, I guess. Uh, let's see here. No, we talked about that and that. Uh, just kind of going through what we talked about. Um, yeah. So current goals for the future uh you also have your own podcast i do i was on an episode kind of yours of. as well <laughs> kind of it's been a while since i and, had an episode yeah well and and if you want to man i can go ahead i know this wasn't planned but i can go ahead and link that down in the description below yeah man um we talked about some pretty heavy topics in some of them so i think you know that that podcast still has some good to do for people sure um yeah. maybe i'll bring that back soon I'm not entirely sure what the what the future is looking like on that. I had big plans for it at one point, but plans change, and you know you start to think about different ideas. So we'll see how that uh, how that plays out. Yeah, that, that podcast is called the Modern Socratic. Absolutely, I think I have about six or seven episodes of that. And you are a modern Socratic. <laughs> Absolutely, just the title <laughs> itself just attracted me to watching your podcast. And so then I ended up digging into the first episode. Yeah, man. And then uh, for me, and I mean, and for my viewers that don't know, like um, I ended up getting on it before I even started mine up. So <laughs> it was pretty cool. Yeah, man. <laughs> it was fun. It was really fun. Absolutely. Uh, it was uh, what? Me and Jack and you, I think that talked. Wait, no, it wasn't. Who was it? Oh, Patrick. Patrick. Shoot. <laughs> I'm totally screwed mm -hmm. up here. Yeah, no, me and Patrick. Yeah. And he was, was on your first episode? He was on my first episode. Yeah. Yes. Funny how we're all networking together. Right. Yeah. You know? Look at that. One, one person knows eight other people that you can talk to. Exactly. That one or those eight other people know at least eight other people you can talk to and so on and so forth. Next thing six you know degrees what, of separation. Six degrees of separation. Because then within a year, you can get to know at least 5,000 to 8,000 yeah man you made some pretty <laughs> i'm over exaggerating too. we'll say at least a thousand different people in a year for sure and you never know where one network or one connection is going to take you and i've got some pretty cool stuff on that too mm. okay. that also goes along in the exclusive because that i feel like what we're, where we're about to go is more like into our personal lives i feel like like i feel like we're only really uncovering the surface right now like what you guys mm. see on youtube but you know no, there's, exactly. There's some meat under there that we got to get to. And I mean, the other part of this too, and being a content creator is that it's going to be shown everywhere on the world exactly. wide web. So you, you get to choose how much you want to share and God, dude, I've seen some people get real, real quick and reality just happens and either it's a flop or they just get so many views for it or it just kind of blows up just because of how ridiculous it is you know mm -hmm. so i mean really as a content creator or someone that's just trying to get attention you know like you get to pick and choose what kind of content you want to create and put out there at the end of the day i think that if uh you're going to stick with a niche find that niche and stick with it at least that's what elisha was able to give me advice on have some purpose behind it too if i like if absolutely if you had to give advice to any like content creator that's the one one piece of advice that I would give to you. And I'd love to hear your thought on that before we like wrap it up here, but have some purpose behind what you do have something that's like greater than yourself. Cause if you're doing something and it's all about you, you're never going to be able to scale it at length. And it's never going to, it's never going to fulfill you. Everybody has this like void that we're trying to fill that we're trying to fill. And the problem is, is we're not thinking, you know, bigger thoughts, like we're only thinking selfishly. So when you really have some greater purpose that you're working towards, it changes everything. For me, I want to like, I want to lead people, you know, I want people's lives better. I want to make them easier. I want to make, you know, help other people become successful. So I want to be a leader and inspire other people to do that. Mm. Like you have to have some greater purpose. It can't be about you. 
no, absolutely. And I guess for me, like, I want to be able to inspire people to a degree that they can really start somewhere and, and, and go from there. They don't have to be, they don't have to have everything together. They don't have to have the perfect camera, the perfect editing. They don't have to yeah. talk well. I, I look at my past videos when I started out talking in front of a camera, dude. God awful. <laughs> right. Um, but that's the thing, Luke. Like, you can't have everything planned out. You can't expect that. Right. Life gives you curveballs all the time, and you just you can't expect to have everything planned out. You have to take it step by step, baby mm. steps, man. Start Absolutely. some. Both of us started on camera. We were terrible. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't advise anybody to go watch that video that I made or that, you know, the first videos because they were yeah. awful. But you got to start somewhere, you know? Mm. No, of course. And, uh, you know, I think another thing that I want to try and bring to my channel and to bring to people, specifically men, is to really bring back that masculine spirit. And that's what it is, man. Like you, you just said one of the traits as, um, as being a masculine man, we're chosen to lead, you know, exactly. we, we, uh, we want to take the lead or we take the lead and we try to go in our, uh, in our leadership position in that, in that direction, you know, and it depends on where you want to go. Like, you know, for me, I, I have a lot of knowledge about health and wellness and I'm hoping to, in the future, take my channel in that direction. But I also got inspired into podcasting. So I'm also hoping to do this at the same time with my channel, you know, and uh, just see where it goes. Like for me in the very beginning, man, this whole thing started out as a project. I had no idea where it was going to go, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, that's, that's kind of one of the rough places you want to start out with YouTube nowadays. Like nowadays you got to have some sort of a niche or a theme for your channel versus like where Elisha Long started back in 2013, where he got in front of the camera and recorded for the first time. And then he just kind of started talking about his life. But as I watched his older videos to his newer videos, I saw where his progression was and how he started to get into a theme. Um, right. I mean, dude, and I remember YouTube back then, you know, like how, how it all was. Like, it's crazy how, how much it's changed in like right. the last 20 years, you know? Yeah. I mean, and you know what, man, I would say sometimes you don't even have to know your niche. Like just sure. your life alone. If you just film your life, man, people will watch. If you keep putting stuff out and, you know, you get better incrementally over time, people will watch because there's only one of you in the world, mm. unless you're a, like a twin or something, but like everybody's different, even if you are a twin, you know, like, <laughs> there's only one you, right. you got to put yourself out there. If you're not being seen, if people don't know who you are, you're, you're never going to amount to anything now because that's all everybody sees. You know, right. they just see content, 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 content. I think, uh, Gary V does a really good, uh, idea or he does a very good uh, way of explaining that yeah so yeah. i would i would listen to a little bit of him yeah do you do you know which uh like how he explained it a little bit like do you know that phrase or <sighs> i do not i just remember him spouting off content gary v talks about so much stuff man it's <laughs> yes he does that's why i was wondering which one you were talking about because I've, I've i've seen his content i've listened to him um i've watched his videos Mainly, he comes up on my Facebook feed like crazy, dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> I just see this random videos, but they went viral because of what mm -hmm. he was saying or what, like, a two minutes of what he talked about, you know? I'm like, shit, dude, Gary V. All right. <laughs> In the <Yeah>. flesh. <laughs> but, all right, Zach. Well, real quick, I know that I had, uh, I had said at the beginning of the episode, but to wrap things up, where can people find you, uh, name specific? And for uh, all my viewers tuning in, I will link all these down in the description down below so you guys can find zach and find him at his social media links and platforms awesome awesome so guys if you want to find me just type in my name on youtube zachary heath and z-a-c-h-e-r-y h-e-a-t-h i'm a little bit different i don't use that <laughs> um if you want to find me on instagram it's zach underscore heath underscore and as part of the kind of like kind of project that i want to bounce off your head luke if you want to sure. find me on snapchat now it's mm. z w54 i want to connect with like anybody now i want to talk to you guys i want to mm -hmm. i just want to I, I want to meet everybody you know okay There's so many connections in this world i just want to talk to people so if you're watching this right now and you need somebody to talk to or you just want to bounce an idea off the head or maybe you have like a, a situation that you're like dealing with and maybe you need like an outside source hit me up on snapchat hit me up on instagram youtube i'll respond back i read everything yeah all right that's it man I will leave all those links 
for your viewing pleasure down below in the description uh, for all my viewers as well and everybody that's just tuning in the episode. Um, Yo, you, you mind if I get a like quick picture here? Quick picture? What? Yeah, man. Just just us talking real quick. So I us talking? Look. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure, man. Go for it. This is uh, the raw, real deal, the podcast. So let's do it. <laughs> Drag a pose for me, man. <laughs> you want that? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> awesome. Sweet deal, man. Um, and as for uh, the channel, you guys, it's the LJ Effect. You just type it in. It's all one word. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you guys want to see any more exclusive episodes, check out my Patreon at the LJ Effect for more exclusive episodes uh, that I will be doing with uh, everybody that's getting onto this podcast, including me and Zach. So definitely check out the Patreon page, like he's mentioned a few different times in this episode today. Uh, and you out. will see me and him talking, uh, talking in a full episode, full length episode. Uh, no. No, what am I trying to say? Fully raw, uncensored content, exclusive content uh, that you will not see on my channel. So, and you can get access to that for a minimum of $5, guys. It literally costs as much as a Starbucks cup of coffee. So literally five bucks at this time. Um, as soon as, uh, yeah, five bucks at this time. <laughs> so very cheap, cost effective, but yeah, and so I think uh, with that, Zach, I think we'll just go ahead and wrap things up. Awesome, man. Thanks for having me. Dude, thanks for thanks for doing this, man. I really appreciate it. Couple me Peace. out. I'm just trying to help you out, brother. All right, man. Come to the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> yep, check out the Patreon, you guys. And uh, check out the page and uh, become a Patreon. So, all right, guys. And if you haven't yet, like, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we will see you guys in the next podcast. Take care. Peace. Peace.